Emerging pathogens, especially viruses like influenza and coronaviruses, have always been extremely at risk of spilling over into humans and causing these devastating pandemics. And it's only getting worse and worse with increased globalization. And so it's really important to look into vaccination so that we can combat these as they're happening or before they're happening rather than afterwards. Vaccines are as good as what you put in them. For the flu vaccine, that usually means the circulating strains based on surveillance around the world. And then it takes, you know, six to nine months to start making those vaccines. And by then the virus is mutating and changing. So you're always constantly playing catch up. And in good years, there's not too much mismatch. And in bad years, there's quite a bit of mismatch and the efficacy can, can drop down quite far. Back in the late 2000s, there was a huge development in technology for being able to isolate antibodies. So it was by sorting through these antibodies that we saw, oh my goodness, there are some antibodies that are much broader than we would have expected, especially against influenza virus. We have discovered broadly neutralizing antibodies against flu, against HIV, and more recently against SARS-CoV-2. And these discoveries tell us where the conserved sites locate and how broadly neutralizing antibodies target such vulnerable sites. When we're immunized with the spike protein, we make antibodies that can block infection by recognizing the spike protein. However, most of the antibodies that are induced by vaccination targets a certain regions on the spike protein that we refer to as immunodominant epitopes, and these are highly mutating whereas only a small portion of the response is actually directed against what we call immunosubdominant epitopes. These are what are really important for universal vaccines because these are much more conserved. They don't mutate as much. It is hard to induce broadly neutralizing antibodies, often hard, because they target the most conserved parts of the virus. And viruses tend to want to hide those parts. If they had them right out there, then we'd all make antibodies that neutralized all the different variants that were there and, and the variants would be ineffective. And one of the great viral strategies is changing shapes, is, is mutation. And inducing those sorts of antibodies often requires some special tricks. And those are sorts of tricks that we're learning now. So increasingly we can think that universal vaccines are feasible. This new wave of vaccine design is incorporating several different high throughput techniques, such as our MPEM technique, where we can map antibodies in real time, because it's not just targeting conserved sites, but it's targeting them correctly. This is what we do well here, understanding at a very deep molecular level, the ability for viruses to evolve and escape. And on the other side of the coin, understanding how the immune system works and how genetically different people respond and people that have different prior immune histories, which may influence their response to a new infection or a new virus. And so by combining all those variables together, we can shine a light in a place that we've not previously done before. It has been very exciting working in this field. We really can feel the impact of how these vaccines could really help us after going through this pandemic. And influenza viruses have such great potential of causing mass devastation that it is really exciting to be able to try to combat that ahead of time, try to be prepared for the next pandemic.